Welcome to a brief uh, video overview of how to do Project 9. Now, Project 9 is the one where you F-read the structs that you designed in an earlier project and F-wrote to a .dat file in the previous project. Now it's time to read them back in to a program and print out the results, which is really the only way you can know that end-to-end -end, uh, things work correctly from your creating and writing and reading. So this is, uh, there are lots of different ways to read the structs back in. This is a pretty easy one, I think. So I'm gonna show you what I think is the shortest amount of code to do this. And it takes advantage of some of the features that FREAD uh, offers. So first let's look, I'm gonna use dogs for the example. I'm not sure where I got this from. Somebody probably turned it in either this term or last term, but um, any struct you have will do, whatever struct you selected. Uh, that you designed, whether you designed one about shoes or phones or whatever, it'll work. So looking at dogs.h, that's the uh, hash include file that you need to define the, the dog structure. Uh, it has the guards, that's this if not def here, that's a protection against including the header file more than once. That won't happen in your program, but it happens oftentimes in large programs that have many include files. I've typed defed dog. So if you go all the way down to the bottom and read here, a dog is this struct. It has an integer age, an integer long coat. I think that was a bool or boolean in an earlier version of this header file, but that doesn't work well with my compiler. So I changed it to be an int. So it just really has a value one or zero. A one if the dog has a long coat and zero if it's a short coat. It's got character arrays for the breed, the color, and the name. So it's a very basic sort of structure to describe the attributes of a dog. I made it dog with a capital D because I'm following a convention actually used in Java where the names of structs or classes are always capitalized, but you can call it anything you want. However, I think making it singular, dog, rather than dogs, makes it more clear that this struct only describes one dog and not an array of dogs. As you'll see in the program, we're going to have an array of dogs, and I think this helps to make it more clear. So that's the .h file. Here's the C file that uses that file to read the dogs in. Now this is a, um, it includes dogs.h, um, uh, the standard files. I don't know that I need string.h. I included it. It's probably not needed. Doesn't hurt to uh, include files that you don't actually need. They're ignored by the compiler. Here on line 7, I define this is the maximum number of dogs that I will read from the file. So if you were very diligent and you have a small army of dogs and you put 15 of them in your file, I'm only going to read the first 10. But this is going to work for almost everybody because I think I only ask you to make five instances of each struct. So I've got it now. I have a name, Max Dogs, that equates to ten. Here's an array of dogs. So dog is the type, one dog. The dogs, plural, is an array of ten dogs. It'll hold up to ten dogs. So it's an array of structs. That's where we're going to put the data that we f read in. Inside the main function. Uh, this should seem pretty familiar to you, and it's going to look a lot like the program you had where you did the F right. Uh, I opened a file, and I called it dogs.dat when I wrote it in a previous program, when I wrote it with the right dogs. Uh, but the only difference is I'm going to open it for RB, read binary, not WB, write binary, which is what we used in the previous example. Of course, I check that the file opened correctly. That's this code. Uh, and that's very possible that your file won't open correctly if it's not in the current folder or if it's uh, you, you misspelled the name or you somehow got dogs.dat.txt or any one of a number of simple but annoying typos you can make. If you catch that with this code, it keeps your program from crashing. It makes it, I really should add, and I will, a message so I know what happened, <laughs> which would be a very good idea. Um, Couldn't read dog's file uh, to tell myself what happened when things go bad, if they go bad. Okay. In that case, I return a one, which is I just have a return value because here I declared int to return an integer. So I return a non-zero number, a convention that's still historically used for historical reasons and almost nobody pays any attention to anymore. Here's the heart of the program. 
this variable, it's an integer, dogs, num, in dogs read, number of dogs read, is the return value from f read. And if you look at f read, it looks almost exactly like f right. It's the mirror image of f right. The first argument is the place to put the data. Now with f right, this was the location of your dog struct, the place the data comes from. Now, this is the location of the first element of your dog's array, because this is where all the data is going. We're going to make one F read do all, read all the dogs. Size of dog, well, that's how big each dog struct is. Uh, and again, you want to use size of and not try to do some kind of manual counting here. Max dogs is how many dogs should F read try to read? Now, what if there aren't 10 dogs in the file? That's okay, because when fread comes to the end of file, it's going to tell you the number of dogs it actually read. So if it only reads 5, this will be 5. If it reads a, uh, it won't read more than 10, so if there are 11 dogs in the file, you're only going to get the first 10. And of course, fp is the file pointer that you opened above, which connects the dogs.dat file to your program. So this one fread reads up to 10 dogs into the array. I don't know exactly how many dogs I read, but I can make a loop that uses the return value from fread in dogs read, and this will run the appropriate number of times. So I'll start counting from zero. Well, let's say there's seven dogs in the file. Uh, it'll count up until the six dog, zero to six, that's seven. And for each dog, it will print, and this is a, a little bit tricky to type. This sort of name right here, the name of the array, the subscript, i, and then dot, the dot operator, and then the name of the struct member that you want. So dog sub i dot name and dog sub i dot age. Of course, at the end, we'll tidy up, we'll uh, close the file, and uh, just for, for tidiness, and return zero, meaning everything was successful. Um, let's try compiling this thing. Uh, I'm going to do it old school with the command line, so uh, you uh, uh, stick with me on this. Let's see if I can find the right window. And, of course, I can't find the right terminal window. Hang on. There we go. I've been trying this a lot, as you can see, so go to that window. Okay. I'm going to compile as the command line read dogs 2.c. It compiled okay because there are no error messages. In the uh, terminal window in Mac or the terminal in Linux, the result of compiling a program is a file called a.out. Yeah, that's a stupid name. It's a historical artifact, and you can actually tell the compiler to give it a better name, but I didn't because I'm in a hurry. But if I run a.out, that will run the result of compiling dogs2.c. So I'm just going to run that. If I can type. And there are the, it looks like there were five dogs in the file. Someone came up with very creative dog names. I mean, Snoopy's not very creative, but I really like a Violet as a dog name. I, I would never have thought to name a dog that, but it's very cool. And there's the age of each dog. So Tyson's 10, Theodore's 1, Violet's 1, Ginger's 4. That would work for any number of dogs in your .dat file from 1 to 10. So that's the nice thing about the way this code here with the F read works. So if you code your program with your struct the same way, you should be able to get Project 9 to work perfectly well. Thanks.